Beresford, who comes from Austrade, and more importantly, Tim was once a student of One Piece with So How are you, Tim? I'm well, Peter, and how are you? Fantastic. So what's your official title at Austrade nowadays? Uh, I'm Executive Director of Austrade Australian Operations. Okay, but you've, you've had a pretty illustrious career since I educated you. You're a banker. Uh, Westpac, you were there with the acquisition of Rams Home Loans, is that, is that right? Yes. Um, you've been a part of Prime Minister and Cabinet. What Prime Minister were you with? I was with both Julia and Kevin. Okay, so you, you, you would have been watching that battle with keen interest. And now you're with Austrade. Indeed. Okay. Now it's really interesting with Austrade that I always presume when the currency is low, it's such an easy door open. Now at the moment the currency is high and the forecast is that they're going to go higher. What's it like for Austrade then as a, as a consequence of that? Look, I mean, Paddy, you're right. It's tough for Australian business at the moment, particularly those businesses looking to trade. Mm. Um, the conversations we typically get in with Australian businesses are, even with a tough environment, and the, the dollar is tough and will remain higher for a, a lot longer, mm. um, those in trade and looking to trade are still looking for opportunity. Mm. And I guess where we Austrade can really help them is actually thinking about where there is genuine information gaps and actually working with them about actually closing those gaps. Mm. They can be as simple as, do I actually have information that can give me access to uh, you know, intellectual property, for mm. example? Mm. Do I have access to someone who can tell me about the competitors in a market? Mm. I mean, I think one of the things you'll find, Peter, is the Australian government is really well placed in an international environment. Mm. And one thing Austrade can help Australian small to medium-sized businesses do mm is actually get access to market. Yeah, and, and historically, the Austrade story has been a, a great story because you have opened up plenty of doors, but that has actually been created more when the currency was lower. So uh, that's why I started off this, this, uh, on this point, because you're more, in a sense you're more important because I would have thought that some exporters have a, a disincentive effect. But once upon a time, if you thought it was so easy, you had that price competitiveness, you, you're knocking on the door of every country in the world. Are, are you finding some Aussie exporters being a bit reluctant because of the dollar? I think they're finding it more challenging, but I think those that have made a commitment to actually export and are genuinely export ready are looking for opportunity to export and they're having to be a little bit more innovative in terms of the way they do it. I mean, yes, it's much more difficult to win on price. So therefore you're looking for genuine market insight into the market and where you as an exporter can actually genuinely add value. And that's where we can help because we can provide insight in market. Austrade, as you know, has over a thousand people in it. The vast majority of those people work overseas. So mm. their ears are on the ground, they are in market and they are able to give you know, small to medium sized businesses the insights they're looking for to actually tackle the price competition that they face yeah. in market. Okay, one of your, your, your big issues must be the fact that the government's trying to get a budget surplus. So that means just for all departments, the government's not going to be as generous. And there were some complaints that the, the pool of money, in a sense, ran out because there were so many genuine uh, exporters, you know, claiming the money. Do we still have a budgetary restraint on, on the generosity of Austrade? Look, I mean, I, there's no question, you know, um, like all departments, we've got the obligation to achieve what the, the government of the day asks. Yeah. I mean, in terms of that, I think you'll find we, our focus is what we've done with this is become far more targeted and focused. Yeah. So we are putting a lot more of our resource, our energy, into markets which where there are those information serious gaps, such as the China, the Asia story. Yeah. There's a serious opportunity there, and that's where we're putting a lot of resource into those markets to help small to medium sized businesses and medium sized companies actually access those markets. So if you like Peter what we've done through this story is actually repoint resources, repoint re our, our distribution footprint if you like mm. into markets where we see the bigger opportunity for Australian exporters. And I, and I guess you're alluding to one of the news stories that came out last year that some offices in some traditional markets were either closed or reduced the, the resources there and you started going after I presume the the markets that you thought had more potential? Yeah where there's, bi where there's bigger opportunity for the Australian government and remember mm. in markets like North America you know where we don't have cultural barriers mm. where we don't have language barriers mm. it's far more straightforward for an exporter to actually access this information mm. that may exist, whether it be intellectual property or I need to get a, uh, a commercial lawyer or whatever the case may be. Mm. And so they can have access themselves by actually our role providing them 
quick and easy quality referrals in those markets. Yeah. Whilst in markets where it is a little bit more difficult, cultural barriers, language barriers, you know, we have a significant presence and will continue to have a significant presence. Because there actually is a, a, a private sector networking organisation that started in the US, which is pretty well stretched right around the place, and, and was like an adjunct to you guys in a sense, wasn't it? Yeah. And that's, what, 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 what's, can you recall the name of no, that? No, I can't actually. No, I, I, I've, inter I've interviewed the woman on the, on the program, yeah. and, and they've done very, very well. Yeah. Okay, so in terms of China, China clearly is our future. What is the the exchange rate challenge China versus Australia or is it less so? Look I think you know again we can't deny the exchange rates an issue yeah. and it is but if you, you're taking the long view and when you talk to exporters who are serious and committed they take the long view mm. and the long view is is that this is an opportunity for us more than a challenge for us. Mm. So for those export and export ready companies that are taking the long view what they're looking at is they're looking at how am I going to be successful in this market and what help do I need to be successful in this market and I think you'll find that you know currency fluctuates up and down up and down day mm. in day out but for those that are genuinely committed to these types of market they are finding their opportunities and they are being successful in these markets mm. and I think that's where we can provide a role in terms of how we can help organisations that are taking the long view actually get into some of these markets. And it's also the value of Austrade must be the insights of those on the ground who have uh, a better understanding of, of the, I guess, the transparency issues, the language issues and, and the actual demand issues. You know, what, what is it, say for example, Chinese people want? And an interesting story this week was James Packer yep. arguing the case for a casino at, Bang at, at, at Barangaroo on, on the basis that he believed that Chinese tourists really want high quality export, uh, sorry, resort hotels. And I guess that's the kind of insights you expect to get from Australia as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, because we have significant resource on the ground, we have people with their ears to the ground. Mm. And they're in conversations identifying and aware and, and making aware of opportunities that may well exist. I mean, only the other week to a small to medium sized business, we provided a, a flower and seed opportunity. Mm. Now, because we're in market, because we know about that and we've identified that as an opportunity and now that's you know something that's been considered by a number of Australian businesses to provide that flower and seed opportunity. Small example people but gives you an illustration of being in market and being the ear to the ground within market. I, I know that I've come across a number of businesses that I've written stories about in, over the years where they've, they've gone overseas with Austrade to, to exhibitions and things like that. Are those sorts of things still valuable exercises for, for businesses to get involved in? Absolutely. I mean, as you know, if you're taking the long view, you need to obviously build a network. Yeah. To build a network, you need to actually have various <laughs> avenues which we can help get you that network in market, whether they be through you know, events or whether they be through um, market access plans and working with them or visit plans, that's absolutely something that we can provide support or service. Tim, if there's a small business person or even a medium sized operation who haven't really gone into exports, what do you think is the best thing they should do in terms of finding out what Austrade can do to assist the, the passage of their product becoming ultimately an export? Well, look, I think the simplest thing for them to do is give us a call mm. on 13 28 78 mm. and have a conversation. If you are export ready, there's absolutely an opportunity for us to work with you. If you're not export ready, the very fact that you've had the conversation with us hopefully has helped disturb your thinking mm. about what you need to do to become export ready. And there are education market. programs as well to make you export yeah, ready as well. Absolutely. All right, mate, thanks for joining us on the program. It's great seeing some of my old students go right to the top. <laughs>